Ready for summer and want an enjoyable day trip? Head to Fauquier County, Virginia, just off I-66, nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Fauquier County has over 25 local wineries, breweries, hiking trails, and Rappahannock River access. Check out visit Fauquier.com for details. Fauquier County, find what you love. This podcast of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs is sponsored by AAA Heating and Air. The premier HVAC company in the Midlands is growing. Are you a top HVAC technician? AAA Heating and Air is looking for dedicated applicants to fill their fast-growing service department with top-notch HVAC technicians. If you're the best, then they want you. If you're ready to stop working and start a career, you can earn up to $100,000 plus a year at AAA Heating and Air. Quality candidates will have at least two years' experience and a good driving record. Benefits include top industry salaries, commission on service and unit sales, set call limits, company-provided take-home vehicle and gas card, company-provided cell phone and tablet, health, dental, and vision benefits, 401k retirement plan with company match and scaled PTO based on length of service. Contact Roy and Dana Finley at 803-677-1500 or check out their job postings on Facebook or ZipRecruiter. Triple A air when you need us. Triple A heating and air. It's the Geek Guy Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs, founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark. The 2007 South Carolina class was, at that time, sixth in the country and fourth in the SEC, which is amazing. West Mitchell. You know, I think if you're South Carolina, you're you're aiming to, to at least be at 50%. Then in theory, you're adding talent, you're getting better, you're putting yourself in a position to compete. And Tyler Head. It's been a great week for South Carolina. On the recruiting front, still certainly plenty to talk about. On the home of the Gamecocks, 107.5 The Game. And welcome into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler West and Chris along with you on this Thursday morning. Thanks so much once again to Miss Hopkins, K-Hop as we will affectionately call her now. For hanging out with us for the Garner Trust Hour. That was a lot of fun. If you missed any of that conversation, we'll have it up for you shortly on the 1075 The Game podcasting page. Well, we've had a lot of great guests obviously come through uh, for the Garner Trust Hour. Really cool to get kind of a fan's perspective on things. It was. Uh, and I think, unless I'm mistaken, I think K-Hop was the first non-athlete, non-Garnet Trust, non-Jeremy Smith, employee, <laughs> non-Jeremy Smith uh, person to come on. So... Uh, we didn't get to ask her how honored she was to be the first. She was smiling. I could tell oh, she yeah. was pretty honored about it. She, honored. she did a great job. Always put some words in her mouth. She, as she was walking out, she was like, best uh, radio show I've ever been on. Wow. Now, how many words. has she been on? Well, we're, we're, that doesn't we're matter. Gonna, I don't we're know. not going to ask that question. <laughs> no, we're not going to ask that. She did a great job, though. Very entertaining. Uh, I want to go back. Uh, every time she, she had lots of like sayings and phrases, and I should have jotted them all down. So... I, I didn't, so I'm going to have to go back and listen to the podcast, too. Wes, what are we talking about today? On I was about to ask you, dude. Right? Not, there's actually a lot that's happened. There's a ton. So we didn't have a show yesterday. There's a lot that's happened. Um, I was sitting there thinking, we actually haven't had a show since Fred Johnson committed either. We have not. So that might, is that a good starting point? May, Tyler, as, well, we're may, just, may as well be. <laughs> right, yeah, we'll start there. Um, Tyler's like, I had a plan. But y'all we're going to run this just, uh, running it. Run this race car up into the, I don't know. I, I got nothing. We need, we need K-Hop. Call, get yes. her back on the line and give us a saying. Uh, but yeah, we. I feel like we had kind of talked about Fred Johnson as if he was committed. Yeah. Um, because he actually technically was to, to Shane Beamer. <laughs> he was one of the three welcome homes. So at this point... You know, there was that stretch. And going back to things coming in bunches, it seems like welcome home tweets from Shane Beamer also come in bunches. It's like if there's one, there's going to be at least a couple more. It seems like there were the three in a row. And so now two of them have been made public. You obviously have Mason Love, big time punter for Carolina, and then Fred Johnson who went public on Saturday. And then there's a third that has not been released by the student athlete yet. Not sure if we even know when that might be, you know, We'll see. I, I would imagine not too long from now, maybe within the next month or so. But, Chris, Fred Johnson, I think we're going to look back on this one as like a uh, – and I want to get into his actual game a little bit because I think we can provide a little more detail. I think it could be a sneaky good pickup. I'm curious to see what his final ranking ends up yeah. being once the – different uh recruiting media companies kind of 
gather more data on him. This is not a guy that has been on the radar, you know, regionally or nationally for a long time. You know, South Carolina obviously knew about him and wanted to get him in camp, which they did June 2nd, very first day, opening day for Shane Beamer's football camps this summer. He was there day one, looked great, uh, measured in 6'3", over 6'3", actually, and 225 pounds, so he's put on some good weight. And then he tested well, and he checked all the boxes, really, from an evaluation standpoint for Clayton White and the staff, just in terms of how he moved, how he, you know, he, he was coachable, just kind of checked all the boxes that they that they wanted to see. And, you know, you kind of look at it and go, man, where, where'd this kid come from, and, and why is he kind of under the radar? Maybe some fans that are, that are listening are wondering that. And again, I go back to a lot of times you'll see guys, and, and he's kind of a known commodity. You mm-hmm. know, a prospect may be a guy that even if he hasn't picked up a bunch of Power 5 offers, a bunch of Division One offers, He's at least on the radar because he's been to camps, right? So there's some type of camp data. He's been to some of the, whether it's school camps, whether it's some of the private camps like Rivals Camps, Under Armour, regional camps, whatever it may be. You have some data points and he's been seen. I don't really think that was the case of Fred Johnson. No, and I um, I actually learned a little bit more about the backstory here. Mm-hmm. I actually learned this yesterday. So basically, because I was curious myself, was he some sometimes staffs will literally find a guy in that you know and for those who haven't been to a camp it's like there's 200 300 400 kids in there and you know mo- most of them are not going to play division 1 football and then so you do combine style testing and you may say wow look this guy's 62 225 pounds and just ran a 45 and you say wow we we got to take a harder look at this guy other times, yes, it's a camp of Al, but it's more, hey, we've been told to look out for this guy, and now we're going to invite him, say, hey, you should come to camp. We want to evaluate you up close and get a feel for you as a person. Are you coachable? Uh, is your speed legitimate? There may be several different things you're trying to check off as far as checking the boxes. Well, in this case, it was a case where South Carolina was aware of him as a player but wanted to see him up close and obviously get some times and measurables in a camp setting. Well, in this case, there's a kid by the name of Ari Watford who is a class of 2025 who has a South Carolina offer and is basically a no-brainer, blue-chip, national prospect as an edge listed at 6'5", 230. And Chris, on three industry ranking has him actually 19th in the country for that class. So borderline five-star guy. Well, in this case, you have Sterling Lucas involved, obviously position coach and recruiting Watford. You have Torian Gray involved as an area coach. Area coach. He has a lot of Virginia territories because of his ties up there. And you had South Carolina basically, they're recruiting Watford, and they see at some point, hey, this kid looks like he can move. And he's put on weight. So they say, come to camp. And then he does. And actually, I would say tests like off the charts as far as what you're looking for in a linebacker. Like this wasn't one of those things where you even had to reach a little bit. As far as the measurables you look for in a linebacker, um, he's probably, I would say, upper like 10 or 20% of, of those guys for for SEC linebackers, I would think, as prospects. Yeah, sometimes you'll see guys come to camp and it's just, it, like, literally sometimes South Carolina is their very first offer. That that wasn't the case, but it was certainly his biggest offer at the time. Mm-hmm. I think he had maybe, uh, Duke may, may have even offered after South Carolina. So he had probably, you know, 15, of kind of approaching 20 Division One offers, but South Carolina was the biggest program to jump in on him. And, and I mean, look... You, at some point, as a college coach, as a staff, you have to be able to trust your eyes on guys. And um, when you see a guy in camp, it's kind of the, uh, if, it, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, mm-hmm. like it is. And so you go back, you look at the film, you see a guy in person, it doesn't really matter if he doesn't have 30 offers. It's possible 
you know, for a guy like that to kind of slip through the cracks. And really, that's that's what happened here. Um, and, and we've seen some other examples of some guys that, like, seriously, like, Nick Eamon Worry was kind of a little bit in that same realm, right? It's not like nobody's heard, everybody's heard of Irmo High School in mm-hmm. South Carolina, right? You look at the stats, you look at the size, didn't have a huge offer list. South Carolina saw Nick Eamon Worry in camp, got that look and said, okay, look at this guy. Like, this is someone we have to take. I think a lot of people also turn around and say, all right, well, you're telling me all this. So maybe the most popular question we ever get or popular statement we ever get, he should be a four-star. Or why is he not a four-star? And no matter what a guy's ranked, is always a why isn't he this. If he's a four-star, why isn't he a five-star? Um, I, I think with a guy like Fred Johnson, my personal opinion, right now he's kind of a mid to high three-star. Our current data that we have, I think, Chris, that's actually probably about right. I think that's about fair. The reason I say that is I think you have the upside on full display. Now, if you watch his film, it's a lot of him playing wide receiver. And on defense, it's a lot of him rushing the passer. And so I think the missing piece that it's not that he can't do it, but it's something that either you're going to have to see or it's going to have to be developed. That's the whole truly sitting in there playing Will Linebacker you know, reading how a play is developing, filling your gap, being physical play to play, and going and, and making plays as a true linebacker. Like, I think right now he's a little bit of an athlete playing that position, whereas there's going to have to be some development to come. So that's the difference between, oh, this guy's high three-star, but he, he can do this, this, and this. Why is he not a four-star? I think you're looking for a guy a little bit more ready-made when you say this is a four-star, this is a, me- you know, a mid-four-star, this is a high four-star, which is why I think if he were to show some of those things as a senior, the upside gives him some upward mobility and potentially moving up uh, in those rankings. But right now, I think it's an incomplete picture so that's why you see him kind of debut in this mid to high three star range. And let me and give, obviously he was somebody that was on South Carolina's radar <clears throat> before he went to that camp, and now obviously committed to them and got offers from other schools in his area up there in Virginia as well as Duke. As you mentioned, how much more attention does he get from other schools now that he is committed to South Carolina? I, I think um, I think this is a kid that's pretty locked in to South Carolina. He actually told us right after his official visit to South Carolina, that it was getting a little bit overwhelming, the number of schools that had started to reach out. The the snowball effect is very real. If you get an SEC offer, other schools are going to start getting involved or at least going to look at you and say, hey, come to camp, come to camp. You come here. You went there. Why don't you come here? And for him, I think from a Carolina perspective, Gamecock fan perspective, the good thing was he just sort of, was like, man, South Carolina has everything I need. He even told us after the OV, you know, I might take an official to Virginia Tech. And rather than take that official, he went ahead and committed to South Carolina. So I got the feeling just listening to him, talking to him, even before he committed, he was sort of already shutting down some of those overtures from other schools. And really the impression I got was that he's not – you know, is a little bit on the more quiet side as a kid and um, maybe just wasn't enjoying all the kind of attention that came out of nowhere. So I, I would say that he's pretty locked into South Carolina and, and doesn't really seem to be concerned with other schools at this point. Hey, well, real quick, Tyler. Yep. To go over a couple of the numbers from camp for Fred Johnson, I mentioned earlier, six three and a half. 225 pounds, over 33-inch arms, and then he ran in the 4-5 range in the short shuttle, which they run the 5-10-5 the shuttle at South Carolina testing, put up a 4-2. So that shows you at that size, yes, yeah, some straight line speed, but even more importantly, I think, lateral movement. And as Wes pointed out, this is a guy that is, is not going to be a finished product by any means when he gets on campus eventually as a linebacker because he's more experienced in some other areas, wide receiver, rushing the passer. But there's a lot to work with here in terms of versatility and the potential that he brings with those athletic tools. All right, we'll have more on recruiting 
next on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. 107.5 The Game. Now, it feels like Monday, because we were not in here yesterday, but it is actually, guys, Tuesday, and so y'all know what it means. That they miss Meatball Monday is they what it means. They miss Meatball Monday. You can make it up next week or, I don't know, maybe have Firehouse twice today. You can still get a meatball. You can still get a meatball if you want. It is not the sub of the day, but if that's what you want, if you missed it, if, if you just got to have it, go do it. But today's sub of the day, our friends at Firehouse Subs is, yes, it's one of our favorites. Tyler's favorite, Juice Wells favorite, the Turkey Bacon Ranch at Firehouse Subs. All 14 Midlands locations is where you can get it. Walk into the store. Uh, go to firehousesubs.com. If you need to know where the closest one is to you, you can check out their map there. The, I'm certain there is one near you, whether it's the one right near us on Main Street, all the way over in Sumter, Camden. You can go to one of their locations too, and you can get the sub of the day. Seven ninety nine for a medium, five ninety nine for a small. It's the sub of the day. It's the Turkey Bacon Ranch. Shout out to our guy, Larry Chandler, great supporter of the show, great supporter of South Carolina Athletics. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Firehouse Subs. Go get yourself the Turkey Bacon Ranch today. That is the sub of the day. Dante Reno was out at the Elite 11 over the weekend. We'll talk about his performance coming up next here on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs on 107. Are adventure and relaxation on your mind? Jump in the car and head to Fauquier County, Virginia this weekend. Just a short drive from D.C. off I-66 and nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Fauquier County has it all, including picturesque hiking trails, Rappahannock River access, plus over 25 wineries, breweries, and cideries. Visit the many unique shops and farm-to-table restaurants of Fauquier County's towns and villages, or take in the many historical attractions suitable for all ages. Check out visitfauquiercounty.com. That's visit F-A-U-Q-U-I-E. ER.com. Fuck here, County. Find what you love. Have the game. It's the Cape Cod Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecock. 1075, the game. Yeah, it was awesome. Obviously, represent South Carolina. Um, it was something I want to do from the day I committed there. Um, I just go out there and represent. Um, I talked to Spencer and Luke before um, about the, the whole like Elite 11 process and what they thought of it. And then they both spoke really highly of it. Um, they both loved the whole experience and they loved obviously being able to represent, obviously Spencer was committed to Oklahoma, um, but Luke being able to represent South Carolina as well. Um, so obviously the whole, the fans love it. Um, they love like the whole recruiting process and stuff like that. But for me, it was more of an educational time to go down there, compete with everybody. Um, just really learn as much as I can and, take a little bit from everybody that's down there um, and apply it to my game. So when I get in college, um, I'm just that 1% better and 1% more prepared. Welcome back into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler West and Chris along with you. That was the voice of Dante Reno, who's talking with Mike Viuva of uh, Gamecock Central the other day, recapping his weekend out at the Elite 11 in Los Angeles. While he did not make the final 11, uh, just reading some of the notes. A lot of positives to take away from Reno's performance out there this weekend. I think it, just getting invited out there kind of speaks to your talent and your ability. That's an honor in and of itself. Uh, I think, Chris, when you get out there, man, you're talking about obviously the top of the top when it comes to quarterbacks in the country. And, um, you know, it sounded like, and so you, you basically have three days out there to show what you, you can do. Sounded to me, just reading the reports, like um, Dante had a much better day two and three than he maybe did day one. I think kind of had to rebound a little bit the, the last couple of days to put himself in a position there. Uh, like Tyler said, did not make the elite 11, like the top 11, the final 11, but still a great experience for him and uh, had a pretty solid day in the 7 on 7, which is like the third and final thing that they do out there. And... um I thought this was interesting too, Chris. They have, there's so many analytics involved now in every single sport, but they had um, the ball out there that, that tracks your velocity and release. And um, I think Dante finished fourth among all the guys out there as far as this, um, this throw score or, or something that they do. It's basically a combination of how quick is your release and how much velocity did you throw the football with, with, um, uh, I think it's 10 plus throws or so that they do um, on a special measurement. And uh, I think that, that the eye test, that kind of matches the eye test because Dante has always been a guy you look at and you say he can spin it. And you can say um, 
He has a really quick release, and he's one of those guys that has quite a bit of experience in releasing the ball from different angles. Yeah, that's the thing that stood out, you know, when we, a while back now, obviously, but when South Carolina first got involved with, with Dante Reno in recruiting, you know, you go look at the film, you go look at his, you know, his camp stuff, his drill work that's on social media, and that that's the first thing that jumps out, right? You're like, wow, this this is a really quick release with zip on the football. And so it was really interesting. I mean, I was very intrigued to see, uh, not that we were there in person, but we're, you know, relying on some guys who are really good at what they do. Charles Power on three's director of scouting and rankings. We reference him on the show all the time because Wes and I are both big Charles fans, Charles believers, uh, just with how he does his rankings and how he how he can evaluate guys. And so I was curious to see, you know, how does Dante stack up? There's, you know, some five-star guys there. Look at uh, Dylan Riola, who's committed to Georgia. I think he's the top quarterback in the country. He's a five-star plus, which is basically uh, a consensus five-star among all four major recruiting services. You have Alabama commitment Julian Sayan. I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name correctly, but a lot of big-time prospects. DJ Lagway from Texas mm-hmm. committed to Florida. And so you're among the best of the best. And the interesting thing, Wes, is they're almost all the guys that were there, if you if you kind of followed Charles's work throughout the week and scouting these quarterbacks, there wasn't really one that was just perfect all week, right? Like everybody had some level of, hey, here was an inconsistent session here. This seven on seven work this day or this drill work this day wasn't quite as good. And so Dante had some of that too, but it seems like uh based on Charles's reporting here that he kind of got back better as the week went on and maybe finished out strong at the end of the at the end of the sessions. Yeah, he did from just like you said from the sounds of it and great experience for him. I, I think there's a lot of teaching involved in this event as well. It's I mean, pretty much no doubt that the top quarterback event uh, that you can be invited to in in the country. There are certainly some some all-star games that I, I guess probably get a little bit more a- attention overall for for just any player but as far as quarterbacks go i think the elite 11 is synonymous with the top quarterbacks in the country every single year and uh like i said just an honor for him to be out there i found myself a little because you know carolina's had a bunch of guys end up in garden black that they got invited out to the finals and i did kind of honestly find myself at at some point kind of wondering how lenoris would have done if um you know if he had a chance to to go out there given the amount of attention that we've heard um you know devoted to Lenore since he arrived on campus yeah it is interesting you know and the the thing about it is sometimes you hear for certain quarterbacks uh well that's not his setting you know and and sometimes that can be an excuse mm-hmm. for Lenore I do feel like there is an element where a, a Lenora Sellers in pads who can run the football um, against other people who are also in pads. That is the most effective version of Lenora Sellers because e- even even if in the passing game, the, the threat of him being able to run, his escapability, designed runs, that's a big part of the game. But he does have a really good arm too. Well, dude, all, all I can think about is watching Shrine Bowl practice. Yeah. I mean, and- that's more of the type of setting yeah Yeah, i i i think he could have gone out there and and lit it on fire honestly because i've watched i mean i've been going to shrine bowl practices for years and i've watched just even good quarterbacks like (laughs) it's just ugly out there man because especially it'll be day one at practice none of these guys are used to throwing to each other and the timing is off. You don't know the playbook. Um, you're trying to think and process as you try to be athletic and throw the football. It's just a recipe for disaster. And uh, I know you were at the actual game. Mm-hmm. I was at, I think it was day one practice. It was day one or day two. I think it was day one. And Sellers is out there just putting the ball on the money to wide receivers Absolutely. that he's not used to playing with. So I, I think, you know, running the football, being physical, uh, expanding plays, that's all a part of his game, but I, I think this kid can absolutely spin the football as well. So it, it would have been fun to kind of see him compared with some of the top guys. 
Now, remind me, when we had we had Charles Power, who again does the rankings for on three on our podcast, what did he say about Lenoris as far as where he could have been ranked? Was he t- was he saying if he was in this class, mm-hmm. he might have been a five star? If he was in the twenty class, he saying he would have been in the conversation for top quarterback in the class. So, well, right now the top quarterback in the class is a five star. Yeah. So, so yeah, he he would have been he would have been way up there. Uh, the, the problem for Lenoris is just he he got hurt. Yes, you know, as a junior, and then the hype train really didn't show up for him because of that. Good so, for South Carolina. Yeah, it was great for <laughs> South Carolina. Um, you know, so I, I think if, if it would have played out a little bit differently, then you probably now Lenoris ended up having a really high ranking at the end. Oh yeah, but man, if he if he would have done like a lot of people think, if he hadn't got hurt, he was on the way to doing as a junior exactly what he did as a senior, which was putting up insane numbers and leading his team to a state championship. So, you know, it's one of those things where if he'd have done that already, you're probably talking about, um, you know, having to battle if you're South Carolina and battle for that commitment. A lot happening in the world of Gamecock athletics, including some changes on the baseball coaching staff. We'll hit that next. Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs, 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, 107.5 The Game. Hey, you may not spend a lot of time thinking about your insurance. Maybe you don't even look at your bill. Maybe you don't even know truly what kind of coverage that you have. Let me encourage you to take a look at that. Dive in, see what type of coverage you have. If you have questions about how you're covered, if you have questions as to whether or not you could save, you can call our friends at Amy Mason Cup State Farm. They make it easy to switch. We switch on a lot of different things all the time. So you should do the same with your insurance. Take a look at it. Consider switching. State Farm agent Amy Mason Cup right here in Columbia can help switch you over so that you can start saving today and make sure that you and your family are properly protected From an insurance standpoint, they're ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Visit amymasoncup.com. That's amy, M-A-S-I-N-C-U-P-P.com. Again, they make it easy to switch and save, amymasoncup.com. Or give her a call, 803-772-5554. When my family was looking to switch and save on our insurance, we called Amy. She took care of the rest. She has an experienced, knowledgeable, responsive, and very helpful team and they can help you with all sorts of insurance policies, home, auto, business, boat, renter's life, anything you may have in mind. Give her a call. Ask her about switching and saving. South Carolina native, local agent, Amy Mason Cup State Farm. Again, that's amymasoncup.com or 803-772-5554. Her office is 612 St. Andrews Road, Suite 4 in Columbia, just off the St. Andrews Road exit off of I-26. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Talk about baseball coaching up next. Gamecock Central take a row or 107.5. An important message from Blue Ridge Hospice. There may be several hospices now claiming to serve the area, but Blue Ridge Hospice is the only local hospice that has been serving here for 40 plus years. Operates the only hospice inpatient care center, conducts the only community-wide grief and bereavement programs, offers a nationally recognized music therapy program in conjunction with Shenandoah University, outscores every other Virginia hospice in Medicare's quality scores, and so much more. Blue Blue Ridge Hospice, the first, the best. Find out more at blueridgehospice.org. It's the Cape Cod Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. And welcome back into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. Tyler, Wes, and Chris along with you. As I mentioned before the break there, some things changing with the coaching staff for South Carolina baseball as Justin Parker has now departed the program, taking the same position out at Mississippi State. And all indications are that Matt Williams from Liberty will be coming in as the new pitching coach for Gamecocks baseball. Obviously, this is uh, the third time in the Kingston era that they are looking for a new pitching coach and all indications that 
uh, Justin Parker, go and get paid a little bit more to go out there and do the same job at Mississippi State. This is an interesting situation. Um, it's been an interesting end to the season and interesting off season already for Gamecock baseball. So, you know, a, a good bit of change actually and some new faces that will be joining next year, right? So, all, as always, we'll see what happens with the MLB draft process. We won't have answers to that immediately, of course. That's later. But the transfer portal, we know South Carolina is chasing, you know, some lesser-known names that have already expressed their intention to join the roster, but also some big names, right, when you're thinking about uh, Colby Shelton from Alabama, for instance. Um, Billy Amick from Clemson, who Monty Lee recruited at Clemson, uh, and Kennedy Jones. There's some big-time guys out there, but, you know, obviously now a change on the coaching staff, too, uh, with Justin Parker going to Mississippi State. And I find it kind of fascinating that this that this move has happened. Um, I think Parker was happy at South Carolina. Some people, I think, are viewing this from the outside. If you don't really dive in, it's kind of a, a lateral move. I, I didn't get to catch last hour, Tyler, what our colleague Colin Taylor said specifically about this. So I assume y'all got into it a little bit in terms of the why, but obviously Justin Parker's getting a raise to go out there. Obviously, Matt Williams will get a raise to come from Liberty to South Carolina. But this is a guy that has been on the radar of South Carolina and other major programs. He seems pretty highly regarded, uh, does Matt Williams. And I actually saw a tweet from Kendall Rogers of D1 Baseball kind of laying out the, those two corresponding moves, Williams into South Carolina, Parker out from South Carolina into Mississippi State. And just kind of mention, hey, like this is one of those situations where both sides are happy with the with the moves that are being made. Not, and I don't think he he did not mean by that South Carolina is happy that Justin Parker left. There's mm-hmm. <laughs> no, nothing to do with it. Pa- but just Parker basically, is, you're getting yeah, yeah. Parker is happy to go to Mississippi yep. State and get the money that's going to get there. Matt Williams is happy to take the jump from Liberty up to South Carolina now. And, and Gamecock Baseball happy to, yes. if you're going to lose, if you're Mark Kingston, if you're going to lose Justin Parker, you're happy to be able to bring in somebody like Matt Williams who is highly regarded and you really like. And, and obviously Mississippi State happy to have hired <laughs> Justin Parker. So let's all yeah. sing Kumbaya, I guess. But <laughs> the, uh, you know, I, I do think there's some sting from a Gamecock fan, st- Gamecock fan standpoint because just losing a guy to a fellow conference foe kind of kind of stings, kind of kind of yeah. hurts a little bit. And you know, Justin Parker, I, I think, very well thought of and respected in the building. Doesn't seem like um, you know Kingston wanted to lose him. So uh, yeah, I, I do think that stings. I also think you probably could not have found a better replacement. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where it, it actually reminds me, guys, a little bit of South Carolina bringing in Travian Robertson on the football side and just how quickly it, it came together. And this is such a time of transition for your program. You have transfer portal stuff going on. End of the season, obviously, MLB draft is coming up. I'm not saying you had to hire somebody quickly, but I think it's certainly helpful that you just basically lost a guy and hired the next guy all in the same day, yeah. basically. So you're talking about someone who um, played at Lancaster High School in, in Matt Williams. You're talking about somebody who played their college ball at Spartanburg Methodist. Very well-respected college here in South Carolina. And, um, you know, it's is someone that, has been connected to this job actually for years and was nearly hired, um, but he, I think, turned down South Carolina before they hired Justin Parker. So yeah. makes that's, sense. That's what I was going to mention. Matt Williams is a name that hasn't come out of nowhere. He's been on Kingston's radar for a while. So as soon as Parker, you know, we knew that he was leaving, it was a pretty easy choice to say, okay, now you can come down here and take this job. And I think that's an important um it's important, the timing and the quality of the hire, especially in the transfer portal era. You know, I mean, we've seen, 
the need to be able to not at the expense of uh, you know not having a quality hire, not being able to make a quality hire, of course, but you want to get somebody in there quickly. So Matt Williams able to you know will be able to get into the program very quickly, integrate Mark Kingston, will be able to accurately tell his guys like, hey, th- this is a guy that we really really like. I believe in this guy, and there'll be some proof behind that, right? Because Mark Kingston brought in Justin Parker. From everything I've heard, it, it seems like the pitching staff really like Justin Parker too. Kingston can look at those guys and say, "Hey, we're we're really we're really gonna you're really gonna like this guy too. If you like Justin, you're gonna like this guy." And you go back and look at the resume for Matt Williams throughout his career; it's a pretty good one. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think maybe something lost in all this, y'all, is keep you know keeping Monty Lee at South Carolina and. You know, I I think if you're going to look at maybe some of the issues with the program, you know, before they were able to bounce back this past season, um, you know, obviously I think there was some uh, approach at the plate, like if you're like nitty gritty baseball type issues. But I I think getting back to recruiting the state of South Carolina and being fantastic at keeping the guys in what it was a small state, but a state that actually produces a ton of baseball talent keeping these guys at home i think if you're if you have monty lee on staff which you obviously do at this point keeping him on staff was a huge part of this this off season for them and, and then you know I, I think south carolina would have been very happy to keep it rolling with justin parker the results overall era this past season all the pitching stats spoke for themselves the fact he did it with uh, you know we talked about it during garnet trust hour noah hall injured um, Sanders obviously didn't have the year he wanted, but the overall staff uh, did phenomenal this year. So credit to him. But you bring in a guy, Matt Williams, who has extensive ties to the Palmetto State, I think is very well respected and well known by coaches in this state. It, now that I think the key, if you're Kingston and, and if you're going to have a long run at South Carolina, it is to keep these guys here as long as possible. And, um, now you, you also, interestingly enough, have some ties, uh, especially with Monty Lee, to some of the guys that you are trying to recruit out of the transfer portal. So I, I think that, to me, Chris, was the, yes, they would have liked to keep Justin Parker. Losing, potentially, Monty Lee to a head coaching job, which, again, looks like now they're going to keep them. that would have been disastrous. All right, we'll come back and wrap up today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. 107.5 The Game. Hey, guys. So I know that you don't want, um, or you maybe don't need a bunch of video cameras in your home office at the house, but um, we, we do need those here, and we've got those coming up. Thanks to our friends here at Integrated Media. Um, anything at your house that involves audio or visual that can be your TV, that can be your surround sound, that could be maybe some some outside speakers, uh, whatever it is you may want to kind of upgrade your viewing and listening experience at your house. Our friends at Integrated Media can help you do that. Maybe you're a little bit kind of just out of the loop on what that might look like. Maybe you're a little bit scared about putting it together yourself. Um, Integrated Media can handle it for you. They can help make this process very, very easy. If you want to get a feel for, for what they may have, uh, what options you may have, you can go to integratedmediainc.com or you can just give them a call, 803-948-8327. Uh, again, audio, visual, whatever it may be, I'm going to have them out to upgrade the man cave soon, which I'm very, very excited about. Check out Integrated Media. Again, integratedmediainc.com. All right, we'll wrap up the day next. Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. And welcome back in to the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler, Wes, and Chris along with you for a few more minutes. Obviously, it's been a very, very busy month for Carolina football in regards to camps and official visits. Uh, camps uh, continuing on uh, tomorrow, it looks like, with another mini camp and then going to have another uh, line camp going on uh, later on in the week and in addition to the uh, official visitors that will be coming in at the end of the uh, end of the week as well. 
uh, which is getting close to wrapping up a very, very busy June. Yeah, we got three days of camps. We got OVs this weekend, maybe a little cookout action this weekend too. So lots going on, final push. And then really, you know, we talked all May, I guess, about the the guys, like the players having their one true month to get in their their rest and recoup and all that stuff. Well, July is kind of that for the coaches. That's their kind of final opportunity to take a little bit of time off before pushing into I mean you're at you're at preseason at that point and then it's the the marathon there but yeah so this is the final week of a, of a busy busy June and uh, it, it will end with uh, quite a bit going on and uh, third official visit third big official visit weekend for South Carolina coming up and Chris man you, we, we've circled this one for a long time you obviously have the committed guys that are going to be on campus Every committed guy who hasn't already taken their OV expected in. And then, of course, the big man, Dylan Stewart, five-star. Daniel Hill, four-star um, athlete, but running back for South Carolina. Jonathan Paler, four-star wide receiver. And then uh, David Bushy will be in as well, the uh, defensive back slash, I guess, linebacker, but defensive back for South Carolina. So, We'll see if any names get added to that list as the week goes on, but so far, already a, a nice list. Yeah, and I know we'll get into that list in more detail throughout this week and kind of lay out where things stand going into the visits. Of course, next week we'll, we'll end up recapping, I'm sure, where things stand after those visits, but some critical targets coming in for South Carolina. Bucci is a later addition, of course, to the list. Just in the past few days, that kind of got scheduled up, but has very quickly after getting that offer recently, become a guy who's, I think we put him firmly on commitment watch for this weekend, no doubt about it. Good high school player for sure. A guy the staff really likes. Also close with a couple of major targets from the 2025 class. Logan Brooking, son of former Falcons linebacker Keith Brooking at Savannah Christian, and then Elijah Griffin, who's a five-star defensive tackle from the same school. So that's certainly one to watch. Wes, something that we have not gotten into, as you mentioned, three big official visit weekends, you know, spread throughout the month of June. But there was actually one official visitor last weekend uh, in, in Liam Andrews. And that is a very intriguing prospect, too. I know we don't have time to, like, do a full kind of deep dive into his mm-hmm. recruitment. But this is a guy that kind of later has really become someone to watch for South Carolina as well. Well, you know, he put Carolina in his top eight. I think that was last month. And, you know, man, you kind of look at it, you're like, all right, there's eight schools. Is, <laughs> is South Carolina second or are they eighth? Like, there's a huge difference between those two things. So I, I feel like, man, he was like on the radar, but was not really, you didn't know, is he like on the, the real radar of mutual interest? And you have another layer, I think, of this thing in that he is a very highly rated offensive lineman but wants to play defensive line. So I think the schools that are like truly in it for him are recruiting him to play defensive line, to play interior, defensive tackle. And that's the case with South Carolina. They get him on the official visit this past weekend. And, um, you know, I, I think it went well. Uh, I think we still don't have a great – you know, we, we've um, – luckily, I'll say luckily because it doesn't always work out this way. We've been able to get reactions from a bunch of the official visitors – so far this summer that has not been the case with Liam so um you know I think everybody's a little bit in the dark on on where his recruitment may be headed I've heard some buzz it could be South Carolina or Penn State you know we'll see how that plays out and and again going to be intriguing because of the positional element here does he pick a school and, and truly just play defensive tackle does he pick a school and ultimately realize, hey, I do have more upside on the offensive line. I was reading his bio that has an evaluation from Charles Power. I think it's from Charles. It's one of the on three guys. And it's basically saying, look, his highest upside, in their opinion, is as an interior offensive lineman. So how does that factor in? But if you're South Carolina right now, perfectly willing, uh, you know, especially with a guy like uh, Jordan Thomas, committing to Georgia, perfectly willing to um, let him play defensive line because he's a, a heck of a prospect there as well. So 
something to keep an eye on. Again, I don't think it's time to like worry about defensive tackle in this class because I don't think you can go back even when Jimmy Lindsey was here. I don't think this was going to be a big defense interior defensive line class anyway. They were only going to take a guy or two anyway. They're in great shape with some difference makers for 2025. So if they can land a guy or two at that spot for this class, I, I think that's that's completely fine. And they would obviously love for one of those guys to be Liam Andrews, four-star kid. We'll continue to break down the official visitors as the week goes along. That'll do it for today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. It's about Firehouse Subs. At time show with Jane Terry up next, 107.5 The Game. Does an orthopedic condition or sports injury have you sidelined? Make your comeback with GW Hospital Sports Medicine. We offer services from neck to toe, including care for shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and hands. Plus, we're the official health care partner of GW Athletics, the DC Furies, and the DC Revolution. Get back to doing the things you love. Learn more at gwhospital.com slash sportsmed or call 888-4-GW-DOCS. Physicians are not employees or agents of this hospital.